Hello, I'm High Heel Knight. This is my Disney Pinocchio remake pitch meeting reaction. Three, two, one. So, you have a movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. So I was just going through the list of Disney classics we haven't redone as live action, right? Oh, we still have some left? That's amazing. <laughs> That's right, sir. Turns out there's one called Pinochio. What? Pinochio? <laughs> Pinocchio. Oh, do you mean Pinocchio? Oh yeah, that might be it. And so what really spoke to me about this one is that we haven't done it yet. Oh, you know what? I like that too. Let's remake an 80-year-old animated movie and slap a big name actor in it because maybe money. I was thinking Tom Hanks as Geppetto. Oh, do you think he could do a consistent Italian accent or... No clue. Let's roll the <laughs> dice. Oh, how fun. So this guy Geppetto lives in a house with a CGI cat and a CGI fish and he makes CGI clocks. Why does he make clocks? Because his dead wife's main character trait was likes clocks. That makes sense. And he's made clocks of a bunch of Disney characters. Just a ton of references in there. We talking like Easter eggs or overindulging in self-promotion? Yes. Perfect. <laughs> so then Geppetto makes a CGI puppet of a little boy because he had a son that died. Oh hell yeah, get those dead relatives in here. Start this off like every other Disney movie. So then he wishes upon a star and this puppet, uh, you know, Pineapple Chai comes to life. Amazing. And then this blue fairy shows up and she's like, hey little wooden boy, if you're good and nice and stuff, you can become a real boy. Wow, so what's the deal with this fairy anyway? Don't worry about it, sir. We're literally never gonna see her again. Oh, okay, great. But before she leaves forever, she looks at a nearby bug and she's like, hey, I'm gonna need you to be this kid's conscience, okay? I'm gonna need you, little insect, to form this child's brain. That makes sense, sure. So then Geppetto's super excited to have a kid again. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Well, but after a couple of days, he's like, all right, you gotta go to school now, because that's what kids do. Get out of here, you child. Does he not accompany him to school? No, he just sends him on his way. This is the man who's lost a child. Yeah, sends a clueless newborn talking puppet unsupervised out into the world, yeah. Wow, well, okay. So obviously this puppet spends like a good 90 seconds staring at a big pile of crap on the road and sniffing it and stuff. I like and approve of that idea so much, I'm gonna pay real money to somebody who's probably passionate about cinema and art to animate that for us. Thank you. And so anyway, then there's this this big talking fox named Honest John and his sidekick, this cat named Gideon, right? Okay, wait, which animals in this world can talk and which ones can't? Some do, some don't, some wear fancy clothes, it's pretty much arbitrary. But what determines which animals- Hey, shut up, so then this talking <laughs> fox is like, wow, this talking puppet could be famous. Cause talking animals are normal, but not talking puppets. Sure, okay, so Honest John is like, hey, you can be an influencer and a possible name for you is Chris Pine. Oh, topical jokes in movies always age well. They sure do, sir. So eventually this puppet falls follows Honest John and ends up joining this show run by a sketchy guy named Stromboli. Okay. But Stromboli's not very nice and he locks him in a cage. Oh no. Yeah, it's pretty rough, but then Pickled Chia Pet realizes that when he lies, his nose grows. Right, because that's the famous Chia thing this character does. <laughs> yeah, sure, all right. So then by lying on purpose, he's able to reach the key he needs to escape. Oh, that's a pretty good lesson for the kids for sure. It is, yeah, resourcefulness and whatnot. Yeah, and also, you know, sometimes lying can help get you out of tough situations. Oh, that's that's, that's not really what I was going for. I mean, not many ways to interpret that one, buddy. He literally lies to get out of a situation. Oh, yeah, no, you're right. Maybe that was what I was going for subconsciously. You know, lying is pretty effective. Sure is. So then what happens? Well, then Pink Coolio <laughs> randomly gets picked up by this coachman guy and forced to go to this place called Pleasure <laughs> Island. Uh, going to Pleasure Island is tight. Uh, somehow it makes me uncomfortable when you say that, sir. As it should. So anyway, the coachman dude brings them to this wacky place where they're allowed to break a bunch of stuff and just misbehave in general. Oh yeah, didn't they drink beer and smoke cigars in the original? Oh, he can't show kids smoking and drinking in 2022. That's not really acceptable. You're definitely right on that one. So what kind of stuff are they gonna do? They're gonna drink root beer. Oh, kids can't drink root beer. That's terrible behavior. Yeah, and also they're gonna smash a bunch of clocks. You know how kids like to smash clocks? That's actually not a thing at all, I don't think. <laughs> well, clocks are kind of meaningful to the story, so we're gonna pretend like it is. Well, okay then. But Pino Grigio, he doesn't participate in any of this, <laughs> he's a good boy. So don't we have him participate and be tempted and stuff so he can learn to be a good boy? No, he's already a good boy throughout the whole movie. He knows wrong from right. So what's the point of Jiminy Cricket if Pinocchio already knows right from wrong? I don't know. You think we might be missing the entire point of the original? I don't care. Fair enough. So anyway, because he's a good boy, he doesn't get turned into a freaking donkey. But those other kids, they're bad kids because they drank some root beer and destroyed things they were told they could destroy. Exactly. So they get turned into donkeys and sold as slaves to the 
salt mines. So wait, why didn't the coachman just turn them all into donkeys right away? Why have them destroy a bunch of his property on Pleasure Island? Unclear. Oh, okay. So then Peanut Child finds out that Geppetto has sailed to sea to try and go rescue him, so now he's gotta go rescue him. Yeah, go save that old dude. Go save him. But then they're gonna get swallowed up by this big sea monster named Monstro. Oh no. Yeah, it's gonna be pretty rough for a, for a few seconds for sure. Oh, they don't spend a lot of time in there? No, they get out pretty much immediately, because Pinock Knock, who's there, starts a little <laughs> fire and the smoke makes the monster sneeze. Well, fantastic. But then the sea monster's gonna chase them. Oh man, it's gonna be tough to get away from a sea monster. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, because this puppet has superpowers now, so he uses his superpowered legs to get them out of there. Oh, he has superpowers. That's great. That's very handy. So then he turns into a real human boy, or he doesn't. I don't know. The cricket's gonna be like, who knows? You know, who knows? The movie ends with a bug being like, who knows what happened? I don't know what happened. That's what we're going with. And so what do you think? Oh, well, I mean, Pinocchio is one of the most beloved Disney movies of all time. It's hard to go wrong with this one. Agreed. <laughs> Oh, pink Coolio. <laughs> That's my reaction. Like, button, subscribe, share. You know what to do. I'm High Heel Knight. Find inspiration everywhere.